welcome to the channel. Your number one entertainment resource six years running. Get ready for a new dynamic. And hold on to your butts. It's going to be a fucking ride. Albeit surprising that it never had a theatrical release, the film still carries with it a feeling of a summer hit and is without a doubt brilliant. Tells me you're brilliant. Brilliant, Jack. Brilliant. Brilliant. Hello everyone, today I'm going to revisit a movie that I previously covered on an episode of The Brilliance Of. I do this to provide additional thoughts, opinions, and even possible theories, in hopes to improve upon the original video. I will be skipping scenes and emphasize certain qualities of the film. I hope you enjoy it. Copacabana, released in 1985. Now I need your help to get back to the year 1985 and stars Barry Manilow, Annette O'Toole, and Joseph Bologna in a classic made-for-TV drama where romance takes center stage and a relationship between two musical up-and-comers leads down the path of jealousy and revenge. Our story begins in 1978 with an elderly Lola Lamar drinking away her depression in the Copacabana Club in Manhattan as the Copacabana song plays over the speakers. There was something about this scene in particular that until one of my recent viewings, I hadn't even considered. My theory is that Barry Manilow's song is playing in Lola's head during this scene, but in reality, everyone else in the club is hearing something different. But hey, that's probably just me. Glancing over, Lola has a vision of her former love, Tony Starr, playing the piano. We transition to 1948, where our two main characters, Tony, played by Manilow, and Lola, played by O'Toole, meet as participants on Sing That Song. Tony's introduction is better received by host Nikki Richards, played by Hamilton Camp, as well as the audience attending the show, at least when compared to the anxious and over-eager Lola. After the two perform, Lola's minor mistake gives Tony the win. This moment kind of sums up the movie for me, as although Tony's immediate reaction shows a combination of surprise and excitement, reality sets in as soon as he sees the heartbroken Lola in a despondent state of expression. Tony attempts to cheer Lola up after the show, and takes her out to dinner in a charmingly awkward scene between the two. And as Lola chows down, you can see and feel Tony's infatuation for her shift into something more serious just by his expression. And that definitely impressed me. There are many actors I've seen over my lifetime that can't seem to emote in a way that appears natural or seamless. And technically, Manolo wasn't even an actor. The story moves forward as Tony and Lola go through a series of auditions and rejections, hey! eventually leading them back to each other. After Tony sings my favorite Barry Manilow song, Who Needs to Dream, to Lola in the middle of an otherwise quiet street, the match that is their story of love is ignited in a touching partnership that develops over time. This would present the issue of Lola getting new connections in the music industry, and she meets her new boss, Rico Castelli, played by Bologna, at a nightclub in Havana. A conflict between Tony and Lola manifests, the romantic jealousy would eventually reach its peak, and Tony would meet his demise when a struggle for Rico's gun would result in Tony's death. This gives the audience the full picture, and any question as to how Lola ended up in this current day state disappears. This movie really has never been given enough credit. Once again, the music and score are an obvious winner amongst the other aspects of the film. But that takes nothing away from the story, plot progression, or the characters involved. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Copacabana is without a doubt brilliant. <laughs> 